So today, what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about your daily structure for a workout. We wanna make sure that you guys understand how to write out a whole day of working, uh, of training, okay? No matter whether you're doing conjugate, whether you're doing periodization, whether you're doing max effort, dynamic effort, rep effort, whatever you're working, muscular strength, power, endurance, doesn't matter. We need to be able to make sure that we have a formula for how to create our daily training structure, okay? So that's what we're gonna work on today, all right? So today's goal, to create our daily training structure, okay? First and foremost, we need to understand that we have time parameters when we're doing this. We're, everything that we do refers to how things work at Jones. So when we're talking about working at Jones, we only get about 90 minutes per class, right? But when it comes to our actual training, you guys have to change, you have to get dressed, you gotta to get to the weight room and all that stuff before we get going. So with all that time, and then you have to go back and change before you go to your next class. So with all that time mixed in there, we lose a little bit. So we only have about, I'd say about 75 to 80 minutes of that 90% to get our training done, okay? So we lose about, 10 minutes or so of training. So we don't get all that 90 minutes. So we gotta make sure that we hit everything uh, accordingly as we're going through, okay? Now, regardless of whether you've taken my class or not, what do you think is the very first thing we're gonna do when we get into the weight room and we start that training session for the day? Whoa, bring it down. Warm up, I heard it, warm up, warm up, warm up. Uh, I'm not looking for specifics yet. So I split up warm-ups into two general sections. When we're talking about this, two general sections. We have our general warm-up, and then we have our dynamic warm-up. Okay? General warm-up and our dynamic warm-up. I would say the general warm-up should take anywhere from about five to 10 minutes, right? Our dynamic warm-up should take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, all right? Based on what we know about those of you who have worked with me, what is something we would put under our general warm-up? Brenna, what are, what are, of the things that we do when we warm up, which are the two main things that we do do you think falls under the general warm-up? Hmm. I remember it was banded exercises so what and... So the walking or the crawling, which one of those two components do you think fits under the general warm-up? Crawling. What's general? It? Yeah, no, the crawling would go under dynamic. Oh, oh right, and oh. the penguin walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she's referring to what I call glute activation work. All right, glute activation work. Essentially glute activation work was we just put a hip circle around you and I had you guys do a bunch of different walking and squatting and stuff like that. We're just trying to get warm. We're just trying to get some blood flow to the body, okay? That is our general warm up. Other things that I would consider part of the general warm up would be myofascial release, okay? Does anybody know what myofascial release is? If you don't, that's okay. Does anybody know what myofascial release would be? You can say no. No. All right, cool, see, simple, done. I explain it to you. So we have our muscles, right? Think of your muscle as a big tube, tube of tissue, right? Surrounding that tube, you have a little thin, clear layer of something that looks like saran wrap almost for your muscle. That is called fascia, right? Muscles are connected to the bones through ligaments and tendons. When the muscle gets tight, that fascia constricts around the muscle. So in order to get the muscle loose and get it ready to go, you gotta loosen up that fascia. One of the easiest ways to do that is to apply pressure to that fascia or move it around and get it loose and pliable and ready to go, okay? One of the easiest ways to do this that I see a lot of you guys at Jones doing and stuff like that is foam rolling. All right, foam rolling is one of the simplest forms of myofascial release, foam rolling. You can use a lacrosse ball. You can use a batting cage softball. You can use a PVC pipe, 
or you can use a foam roller to kind of roll everything out and get everything nice and loose and ready to go. Does anybody know what Coach Hess's side hustle is? What he does when he's not teaching at Jones? He rolls like a 150 pound pipe on people. He does, he rolls a 150 pound pipe. That is called body tempering. It's created by a guy named Donnie Thompson. That is another, that is a little bit more of an extreme form of myofascial release. I actually have one of his pipes in my gym that he made. It's a 150 pound steel roller and that thing works phenomenally, okay? So body tempering is another form of myofascial release. Oh, spelled that wrong. Okay? Another form, myofascial release that we talk about here is self-massage, okay? In my gym, I have a car buffer that sits in the corner, plugged in at all times, okay? Um, you guys, in cross country, you guys have those sticks that you use on your quads and stuff like that. I have a car buffer. It's like 10, 15, 20 bucks tops. You can get it at a hardware store. You can get it at Aldi, or not Aldi, Jesus. You can get it at Target, you can get it at Walmart, whatever you want. But you buy this thing, turn it on, and you just kind of use it to lightly massage the muffle, muscles. Just get kind of things going and warmed up and stuff like that. Self-massage is another form of myofascial release, okay? And then uh, the last form of myofascial release I want to talk about is smashing, okay? So when it comes to smashing, okay, essentially speaking, when we're talking about smashing, you're taking a kettlebell, dumbbell, uh, having somebody walk on you, and you're just applying a ton of pressure to the muscle, kind of getting that body to loosen up, okay? Is there anything in particular, glute, glute activation work, myofascial release in the general world? Do you think I'm, am I missing something? What do you guys think? No, it seems pretty fine. Okay, cool. One thing I do want to add, and this is my personal opinion, but there is a lot of data that backs this up, and I'm going to write this in here right now, okay? No stretching. Okay, no stretching. I do not like stretching in warmups before we lift. Dynamic movement, general movement, or the myofascial release, but no stretching. My reason for it is, if you're gonna shoot a rubber band, do you want a tight rubber band or do you want a loose rubber band to shoot? Which is gonna be more effective? Tight. Tight rubber band, okay? Um, there's a lot of data that just kind of proves that, or not, it shows that stretching can be counterproductive to a good lifting session, especially if you're doing more dynamic, explosive movement. You don't want to be too loose, okay? So I'm not a big fan of stretching. I'd rather you guys not stretch before. We'll include stretching in our cool down, but it's not going to be here in the general warm up, okay? Now, moving on to the dynamic warm up, all right? Brenna, what was that second half of our warm-up that I said would fall perfectly under here? For sure, that was banded work. No, the, so, band, the banded walks oh. is right here. What was the second part? Oh, bear crawls. The crawling, okay? So our crawling series. Okay? When it comes to dynamic warm-up, we want to be a little more active in our movements, okay? Other things that we can do in our dynamic movement, if you see it on the workouts that I'm writing for you guys, the movement prep, okay? Movement prep, which can be anything from Tabata, circuits, etc. We're preparing the muscles to handle the work that we're trying to do. What does that also sound a lot like? We just talked about it in our review. Um, what 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 is what what is the term that is used to dis, or that what is the term of preparing the muscles or preparing the body to be able to handle work? What is that called? Um, I believe it is called three letters. Shoot, I forgot. Sorry. Sorry, sir. Anybody else yeah. know? Physical preparedness. Yeah, GBP. This is a great way that you can add some extra GPP work in every day. You're getting about 10, 15 minutes of GPP work in, you're getting good work in. You're getting good base building. You're, you're getting the body ready to handle whatever you're throwing at it, okay? Now, we're talking about your general and your dynamic warm up. 
The entire purpose of this warm up is to increase blood flow. Ooh, I cannot spell today. Good thing we got Christmas break coming up. The whole purpose of your warm up is to increase blood flow. If you are not a little bit warm, if you are not a little bit sweaty, if you are not breathing just a little bit heavy before you go to do those lifts, you are not warmed up, you are not ready to go. Okay? Wanna make sure that we have increased blood flow sufficiently through our general and our dynamic warm up in order to be able to tackle whatever it is that we're gonna be going on to that next uh, section. Speaking of, what do you think our next section of training is gonna be? Our main. Yeah, our main lift, our main lift, okay? So, we've moved on to that main lift, all right? Main lift section should take anywhere from about 20 to 30 minutes of the training, right? With that main lift, obviously we are focusing on upper and lower body movements, okay? This could be your five by five work, max effort, dynamic effort, etc. okay? Biggest thing with your main lifts, this is not CrossFit, this is not a, a, a conditioning piece, okay? This is your main work for the day, all right? Wanna make sure that you are resting enough when we do this. You rest about three to five minutes between sets, all right? Wanna make sure that you guys are giving yourselves enough rest as we go through with this, okay? If you're not resting enough, you're not gonna be recovered, your performance is gonna suffer. You need to make sure that you are resting, okay? Easy way to track your rest, if you have a heart rate monitor, when your heart rate starts to drop below a certain level, then it's time to get going. Or just simply, you're not panting and breathing and, and, and feeling just really worn out. But do not take this opportunity to be perusing social media, updating your Snapchat, your TikTok, whatever, because I have people that do that in my gym and they end up taking like 10 minutes between each set and they, they actually get cold and they gotta kind of do a little bit of a mini warm up again. Don't try to take longer than three to five minutes between your work, okay? But we wanna make sure that we are focusing on one of our main components here, whether it's a bench press, a squat, power cleans, deadlifts, etc. This is where that gets done, okay? So, after the main lift, helps if I uh, spell lift correctly. After main lift, what do you think is next? Cool down. Cool down, you're jumping the gun here. What did somebody else say? Accessory. Accessory work, yeah. Our accessory work comes in next here. Our accessory work, when we're doing our accessory work, this should take about, I'm gonna put about 15 to 20 minutes here. Okay? 15 to 20 minutes of our accessory work. Now, when we are selecting movements, for our upper movement, you're gonna do one to two movements at max for your main lift, for your accessory work, based on what I write for you guys. How many exercises do you think you're, we're gonna be selecting for our accessory work? Three to four. Yeah, three to four, I'll put two to three. So I'm gonna, I like what you said though better, Hector. I'm gonna go three to four, okay? All right, but now when we're selecting those movements, we got some parameters that we have to keep in mind here, okay? So we're talking about three to four movements. Remember, we talk about balance, right? Balance in the body. So we wanna make sure that we're balancing everything out. When it comes to balance, if for that main lift, we're doing an upper body movement, let's say bench press, which is an extension movement, what do we want our first, what do you think we want our first accessory movement to be doing? If the main lift is extension, what do we want that first accessory movement to be doing? Flexion. Flexion. We want opposite. So make sure we're staying balanced. All right. 
First movement. Opposite of main. All right? Then, your second and third movements. If I say I want your second and third movements to be supplemental to the main movement, what does that mean? Think about it in the bench press, okay? So let's say we're doing bench press. Our main movement is bench. Second movement, our first movement of our accessory work is pull-ups. What do we want my second two movements to be doing? Um, more flexion. Or? Or uh, lower body? Nope. I don't the first thing we said. There's flexion and? Pulling. No. Oh. Flexion extension. and extension. Absolutely, okay? So the second... And third movements are supplemental. Okay? What that means essentially is they're more single jointed. All right? More single joint movement. So for that second and third movements, if we're doing pull ups, for that first accessory movement. Second and third, what do you think would be a good movement to throw in there? That would be single jointed, but be supplemental to the main movement. Throw something out, what do you guys think? I don't know, like elbows? Or yeah, so you're right. Tricep extensions, that would be a great movement to add in, right? Help strengthen the upper body, also helps supplement that bench press, okay? So if we're doing an opposite movement for that first accessory, second and third are supplemental single joint movements. What do we think that fourth movement is gonna be? All of them together? Nope, think about our exercise library. What was the third component of our exercise library? We had upper, lower, and? Core. Core. You always gotta get some core work in, okay? Core work is important. I don't care what anybody tells you, you should try to include some form of core work every training session, whether it's in your dynamic warm-up or it's in your accessory work. You need to have core work in. It is just for overall better health and just general fitness. You need to get some core work in. Plus, who doesn't wanna look good on beach day, right? You guys want to go down to Michigan Avenue, go hang out on the beaches and stuff like that. You've been doing your core work. We're going to know about it, right? Good. Got it. Great. If you want to be a better athlete, you need a strong core. If you want to be a better mover, period. You need a strong core. So I am a big proponent of including some form of core work every day during training. Okay? So we got our general warm-up, our dynamic warm-up. Okay? We talked about dynamic warm-up in regards to GPP. Between main effort and accessory work, where else do you think GPP fits in? Which one of these do you think fits it better? Accessory. Absolutely, okay? So we're gonna make sure that we know that this is also how we help continue to build our base, all right? Last component. What do you think the last component of all of this is? It was already mentioned. Cool down. Cool down. Our cross country runners at Jones probably do the best job of this. All right, our cool down should be anywhere from five to 10 minutes, okay? What are some things, okay? Remember how I said no stretching? Where do you think stretching then goes in regards to our entire training layout? Cool downs, so yeah. that's kind of like you're loosening up everything. Absolutely, absolutely. We have stretching, and then I'm going to put light cardio. You know, you see you, you, people go on a little bit of a recovery jog or they'll jump on a bike or a rower, skier, things like that. I'll put all that in here, okay? Okay. What do you think the purpose of the cool down is? Does anybody have any idea? Uh, 
Talk to me. If the purpose of the general and the dynamic warm-up is to increase blood flow, what do you think the purpose of the cool-down is? Decrease blood flow. Increase it. You want to get the blood flow back going because you're going to kind of tighten up after working your muscles. You want to loosen things up, get that blood flowing, okay? Anybody want to, want to take a guess at why we're, I'm harping so much on an increase in blood flow? What do you think? That way you don't get stiff. Yeah, you don't get stiff and you recover, okay? So when it comes to this, the human body, blood flow equals recovery, okay? When you get warm, if you got the flu, you're heating up, you're increasing your blood flow, okay? When you get hot, your blood is moving, right? The more your blood moves, the more you're getting all the nutrients and all that good stuff moving to where it's got to go, all right? So that's why they say like after you hurt something or you tear a muscle or something like that, trying to get it moving as soon as possible is good for you. Blood flow equals recovery. So that's why we're harping on making sure that you're getting ad adequate blood flow. The worst thing you can do when you are done training for the day is to just go and sit on your butt, okay? Right after you're done training, the best thing you can do is get, try to get some sort of blood flow, whether it's stretching, whether it's just getting up and walking after you're done training, just get that blood flowing and try to continue stairs, to- you have to constantly climb from schools? Say that again? Or the stairs? Yeah, stairs are fine. Um, I mean, I wouldn't go too fast on the stairs, especially if we do a leg day or something like that. But yeah, keeping that blood flowing is gonna help get the recovery process started for you. There's obviously all sorts of modalities and things like that that we, that we can do to aid in recovery, but these are just some simple things that you can do because blood flow equals recovery. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna break this down percentage of volume, all right? Obviously, 100% is easy. That's what we want, right? When it comes to your main lift, all right, 20 to 25% of your volume should be in your main lift, okay? Accessory work should be about 30 to 40% of your volume, all right? Should be coming from your accessory work. You have four different movements, higher rep. We're talking about overall, like just reps getting done, okay? So 30 to 40% of your accessory work. Take all the high ends, right? 65% right now. If you go to your dynamic work, this should roughly be about 15% of your volume, which means your general warm up and your cool down should accumulate or should accommodate about 10%. That's a terrible percentage sign. About 10% of your volume. Okay? Does this make sense to everybody? What do you mean by like volume? So if you're counting out, so what, so in terms of your time allotment, not everybody is going to have 90 minutes to train. So what I'm saying is, is when we're breaking this out into your time parameters, the easiest way to kind of split up how much time you should be spending, do, and these are all recommendations. These are guidelines. This is not hard fact, like this is how it has to be, or you did a terrible workout. But when you're trying to split up your time for a workout, these are percentages that I would use about your time and the total amount of volume. And volume means the amount of work you're doing during those sections. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So like literally if you have only 60 minutes to work out, use these percentages to figure out how much time you should be spending on, roughly you should be spending on each section. If you've got two hours, three hours, there you go. All right, does that help? Yep. All right, awesome. Yeah.